Hi guys, today we are going to do a watercolor version of a Bob Ross style painting. And um, I'm choosing to do this assignment this week because um, this is the week of October the 26th. In my mind, this is Bob Ross week every year because Bob Ross's birthday is October 29th. And he mostly used oil pastels. Um, so this is gonna be a lot different than what he would do. Um, but we're gonna try and stick to his same subjects and style, but using watercolor. So today you're gonna need your watercolor paints. You're going to need your paintbrush and a container of water and some paper towel. And I would also suggest a pencil and some thick paper to do this on so that it doesn't curl. Okay, this is from a mixed media notebook um, that looks like this. If you have watercolor paper, um, that would be mm. fine. Um, but this is the one I'm going to use today. Okay, let me get, oops, let me get myself a piece of paper out of my notebook so I can show you the, how to do it step by step. And while I'm doing that, you can be getting your paper and your water ready. I'm running out of paper. That's my problem right now. I need a new notebook. I might have to use this kind of paper to do. Okay, so here's our goal. Now, we don't have white in our watercolor set. So anything that we want to look like snow um, we're gonna have to not paint on it because we don't have the option of going back with white. If you had acrylics or oil, you could do that. But since we don't, the parts that you want to keep white, you gotta leave them white. And so that's why I would suggest we draw the shack or the cabin or barn, whatever you want to call it, first. And then we're gonna go in with the background. And then we're going to add this little river and some trees and then their shadows, okay? Um, but we're going to start with drawing the shack, okay? Or cabin, whatever you want to call it. Barn. Okay, I'm going to try and teach you guys how to do a 3D looking barn. And how you do that is you draw about an inch long line in the middle of your paper. And then out of about an inch to the right of that, you're going to draw another inch long line. And these are parallel, which means they are next to each other going the same direction, okay? So that's gonna be this part of our house, the front, okay? Now, if you are gonna draw like a stick person version of a house, then you would just add a roof by doing this. The 90 degree angled line or a part of a triangle on the top to give it a little roof, right? And that's how we draw houses. But now to make it look 3D, we're going to make it go back this direction so you can see the side of the house. This part right here. Next part we're going to draw is this diamond shape or a rhombus shape. So we're going to continue this line on the right to be straighter. So it's got about an inch here and another inch going this way. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with this line parallel to that line next to each other going the same direction. And then we're going to draw another line right here and to finish our diamond, this line parallel to that line to finish our roof. And then we need a back wall, don't we? So this line right here needs to be parallel to this line. They're going the same direction. All three of these lines are parallel. They're, it's like a pair of L's, a parallel, because <laughs> they're next to each other, okay? Now we need to put something on the bottom to show that there's a bottom. It's not just floating in the air, it's sitting on something, sitting on the ground, right? So we'll put a line to connect those two sides and a line to connect the front two sides. Now I don't know about you, but a lot of old barns and shacks I see out in the country, they've usually got some kind of an old barn door that's open and falling apart. So we're going to put kind of a square or rectangular shape in the front to show that. If you want, you could put like a little door on the, or a little window on the side. Something like that. Okay. 
And then if you want, since we're using watercolor and we don't we can't do a whole bunch of detail, we're gonna I'm gonna go and put some lines to show that there would be some boards. Barn some barns might be this way. So you could do your boards that way instead if you want. Okay, now the important part here, because remember, we don't have white paint, so we gotta leave the barn top white to make it look white. Like it's like a spring scene where the snow is kind of melting, okay? So, there's that. Now, something else I would suggest doing that I didn't do with my other classes is just super lightly kind of draw out some mountains in the background, wherever you want them, okay? Okay. Just some little, almost like the roof of our house that we did. Some little brackets that go like that. Okay, and then in the middle, I'm going to draw a line that shows super lightly where the ridge is on this mountain so that you can see that this side is darker and this side lighter. The sun is hitting this side, the snow is on this side, and this side dark because it's the shadow. Same with this one almost draw a line down the middle of that ridge. So on this, I'm just going to draw like a little ridge going that way, just real lightly so I know where to paint and where not to paint, okay? Okay. Alright, the next step is going to be to do the sky. So what you need for this your paintbrush with a lot of water in the blue okay oops and I would get a lot of water because we want it to be light so for this one if you want this side of your mountain to look white don't paint it or try to avoid it painting it in this one I tried to do like a lighter purple and it looks more like just a light side of a mountain it doesn't look like snow but this time I'm gonna make my goal to make it white so I'm only gonna paint this side and when you're painting mountains whoops I didn't mean to paint my mountain I was gonna paint the sky first that's okay I can put a little line there um, so what I was gonna say was don't paint this side of the mountain okay so we're just going to kind of paint the sky around it and you don't have to in, um, keep adding paint because there's already enough blue paint on here now that you can just kind of go in and add water just a little bit of color is needed for this sky because the rest of it you could just use water and drag that paint color across it does kind of look awkward that this side really dark and that side super light. So you could take a little bit of blue that's darker and kind of add it in over here if you want to. Wherever you want, just so it looks kind of like there's different parts of the sky, like some parts might be cloudy or something. But I'm not going to get paint on the right side of this mountain. Okay? So now I'm going to get a little bit of purple. And I'm going to go along this this ridge and drag the color down to the left, like that. Okay. You could use green, or you could use a dark blue. You don't have to use purple, but I'm going to use purple for mine. And I'm kind of dragging a little bit of that blue I started with into my left side. So why is it important that I'm dragging it down in a way? That gives you these lines that show movement, like that there's a slope right there. Shows that this, this part of the land is up higher than down here and it goes down like a slope. I might add some more blue to it to make it look even darker. Ooh, too much blue. Okay. Might have to get some of that blue out of there. Too much. I'm using a paper towel to sop it up a little bit. There we go. Add some more purple back to it. Alright, that's the dark side of my mountain. 
it's got purple, it's got some blue. Now I'm going to skip this section and go over here. This is the other dark side of the mountain. The sun's on this side. So this part's in the shadows. And I'm going to drag it down towards me. Drag that color because I want it to look like a slope. If you want more color, mix it longer in here and use less water. If you want less color, add a lot of water and don't mix it for so long. That is a really dark, pretty bluish purple indigo type color. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to kind of drag that color down lightly. Okay, my last mountain. You can put as many or as few mountains as you want. Doesn't have a lot of color, so I'm going to add some more color. Mix, mix, mix. So if you've ever heard the song, Oh Beautiful, and they talk about purple mountains, majesty, because mount mountains aren't really purple, right? They got green trees on them, but from far away and with the reflections of the sky, which is blue on top, they kind of have like a purple look to them. All right, so you've finished, and now this looks like there's snow on it. But mountains don't have a perfect amount of snow. Sometimes there's rocks in there, so if you want, you can go in and drag a little bit of some of these colors and whatever color ends up there it'll be almost like maybe a little bit of the rocks underneath or trees or bushes or whatever is shining through a little bit or you can leave it completely plain white it's up to you so I'm going to add a little bit of water to this paint that's still wet over here and kind of Drag that color down. See how it makes it look like it's lighter on one side? Might have a little bit of snow. Might have a little bit of land underneath that's a little snowy, a little not snowy. Oops. Kind of don't like how this looks. So I'm going to add a little bit more dark color to this. Make it go down further. It's a steep mountain. This side. great thing about watercolors you can kind of spread it out to look the way you want. So a lot of water here right now so I'm gonna have to wait a minute for it to dry a little bit. Okay so now at the bottom of this I want to show that there's snow at the bottom but you want to show that the ground whether there's snow or a lake or um, something you want to show that the ground is at the bottom so you gotta use your paint strokes left to right and that shows in painting it shows that that ground is flat. So we've reached the bottom of the hill. So I'm going to kind of spread that out a little bit, like left to right. So you can tell now we're at the bottom of the mountain. And I'm going to try really hard not to get paint on my shack, my cabin. I'm going to do a little bit of blue here going left and right and then add water to it. So I don't ruin what I've already done here left to right paint. Left to right makes it look flat because we did up and down already. Okay so now it looks kind of like we have snow. Okay um, the next thing I think I'm gonna do is maybe add this river looking thing here. It kind of looks more like just a deep part but it could be a river. So if you want a river and get some blue and figure out where your river is going to be. The further away it is, I'm going to say my river starts like at the end of this mountain and then comes down because the snow was going down the hill. And as it comes closer it gets bigger. So it's getting wider at the bottom.
It takes a while if you've got a small brush, which I know you guys do, so I'm trying to use a small brush too, so it's fair. If you want, you can give it like defined edges so you can see where the edge of your river or lake is, whatever it is. It's kind of like a frozen pond river thing happening here. Okay. And while I've got my blue out, actually, yeah, while I've got my blue out, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so forget I said something about blue. Okay, I'm done with my blue for now. So now I'd go back and I would probably color my shack or cabin or barn, whatever structure you're drawing. I'd start out with some dark lines trying to go up and down like stripes. Okay. Dark brown. You can even put some black in there if you want to make it even darker. I'm going to start with just brown. I might go in with some black to make it look even darker, especially on this side, because this would be the dark side, and the other side would be the light side. Might go back and even put some more black in there after this dries, because right now you can't really see my black at all. That's probably what I'll do. Yeah, it's not even picking up my black because there's too much water on there right now. So I'll have to go back after it dries and add the parts that I want to that are black. Black is not dark enough. Okay, now remember, we're not going to paint the top of this house. Because we want the top to look like it has snow on it. Okay? Alright, so there's my little house. Or cabin. Or barn. Whatever you want. Okay, the next part we're going to do is trees. And the way Bob Ross usually starts his trees... Not all the time, but sometimes he'll give himself like like a brownish, blackish, or bluish, uh, a dark color of a tree trunk, and he'll put it where he wants to put it so he knows where to start. I'm going to put, this is really, really wet here, so I'm going to start over here. I'm going to do one tree right here and one tree right here, and I know I want to do maybe one right here, maybe one right here here and maybe one right here when you're doing art it's best to do thing in odd numbers like groups of three or five because it's more interesting and I think I'm gonna put a different tree different kind of tree right here so I'm gonna start with that and maybe some plants too oops I need more water if you're getting that white space in between that means you don't have enough water Alright, so now I know where I'm going to put my trees. So for pine trees, coniferous trees with cones on them, you're going to use like a greenish brown. And you're going to do a lot of dot method, okay? Pine trees are a shape of a triangle. So you're going to start at the top with a little tiny dots, and then you're going to go wider, okay? It's hard to draw snow on these trees because we don't have any white paint. But your tree needs to look sort of like a pyramid when you're done. But we're just going to dot the branches left to right, getting bigger and bigger towards the bottom. Like if this was a, if you celebrate Christmas, if we were going to get a Christmas tree, you, it would be biggest on the bottom and littlest on the top. Maybe it already melted here. 
and that's why there's no snow on my trees normally you'd go back with like a white paint and put some white on the top of the branches and leave it dark on the underside to show the snow on the top but since um we can't really do that we're gonna just do it this way for now maybe it's starting to melt down below and these trees have already melted This one's a really sparse tree, which means there's not a lot of branches on this one. It's like the Charlie Brown tree. Again, I don't have white, so I can't add snow on the top. I mean, if you, you don't have white, so I won't be adding snow on the top of them. But you could if you had acrylic or even white out, you could go back and put some white on the top. Um, I'm going to finish. So just remember we're dotting it and then we're going left to right to show the branches. And what I'm doing is getting a little green, a little brown, and kind of trying to show that there's branches going all the way up this tree. And if it looks too much like parallel lines, like on those, I went back and I added more in between so it's not too perfect because normally they're not, trees are not perfect, right? <laughs> A couple more trees and we're just dotting it. I'm going to make it big at the bottom and go up and get smaller as I go because that's another way you could do it. I think I used too much water on this one. If your trees bleed and it they kind of mush all together and it looks messy, you can always go back later when it's dry and add more color on top of it. Like, it looks like I might have to do that on this one because this ridge that I painted is kind of Xing out my tree, so I might have to go back later. All right, so those are my pine trees. On this side, I'm gonna draw some deciduous trees, like. We might still have some trees with leaves on them, like right now, like today, um, but it snowed. So they've got snow on them, but we still have some. And I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and orange for these. And I'm just going to, since it's watercolor, it doesn't cover the tree trunk very well. It's okay. Maybe I'll use some brown so it looks like I meant to make it see-through. <laughs> Just kind of showing that these trees still have leaves on them. Kind of a springy scene. The leaves are kind of dying because it's winter, but there might still be some left. There might be some bushes at the bottom that match, that have melted the snow off already. I already painted blue behind, so my yellow and orange are turning green. That's okay. And if you want to add some more little plants wherever you feel like it, like just like every once in a while there might be some plants that are coming out of the ground, you could do that. All right now we're going to talk about um, shadows. These things have shadows because the sun is coming this way, just like the mountain, it's dark on this side. So how do we show that on the snow? We're going to do just some blue underneath where there should be shadows, okay? Light blue. Super light blue. So just a little bit of blue and more water. So underneath, oops, that, see that's too much water even. Yay for paper towels. So there would be a shadow on this side of the building, the dark side, and a shadow on this side of our plant, and probably some shadows over here. Some shadows of the trees, and what you're going to do for the shadows of the trees is you're just going to paint. So a tree is this way, the shadow would be the opposite, so an upside down triangle. So kind of like you're doing a triangle upside down in reverse. I'm going to go back and add some more 
water to this in a minute because it's too dark. But I'm going to give myself like the gist of what I would do. And then I'll go back with water and make it thinner. Okay, so I've done the gist of the shadows on the snow. I'm going to go back with just plain water and kind of add that to it so it doesn't look so perfect because shadows aren't perfect. I mean, they would look probably more perfect but in real life. But in this painting with watercolor, we want it to be kind of spread out. So I've added water to these. Okay, there'll probably be some shadows down here. Underneath this cluster. So I'll add some blue and then I'll add some water. And then probably a little bit of shadows under these things. Okay, and then one more thing I might do is if somebody actually were to live in this cabin, there would probably be some kind of a path in the front that's darker, so you might consider doing a darker blue path coming from it to show the shadow of just like somebody was walking there. Maybe they walked down to the river. And there's a spot where they go down to the river to fish or something like that. And that part would be darker than the snow and the shadows because it's a worn path. Oops. So maybe they go ice fishing or something like that. Or they went for a really cold bath. Or they went to get some water. Oops. And then they might even have a chimney. So that's something else you could draw if you want to. Get some black or brown or something and just do a little chimney. And if there's a chimney sticking out of the top, your chimney probably has a little shadow. So you could add whoop, a little shadow. Okay. And once your shack or your cabin is dry, you can go back and add some more black to it. To show that those doors or windows are open or um, that they're just a different color of wood. And then you can also add some shadow underneath the eaves of the roof to show that it's oops, darker because it's underneath the roof. And this side is darker. I think that's about all that I did in this one. So I've already gotten better now that I've done it twice. That one looks much more snowy. Anyway, if yours doesn't look exactly like this, don't fret. Um, it takes a lot of work to learn how to do Bob Ross style painting, and especially with watercolor, because Bob Ross does oil pastel, not watercolor. If you um, are interested, you can look up Bob Ross paintings and how to do them on the internet um, and on Netflix. He's got the show called The Joy of Painting and you can watch him live on there doing real paintings and those are kind of fun. If you really like frosting cakes, there's a YouTuber called Rosanna Pancino and she does a um, really good job painting with frosting in the style of Bob Ross. So that's kind of crazy and awesome too. Anyway, um, there's that. If you could upload it to Art Sonia when you're done, let me know. It's okay if this takes you a while. But I can't wait to see what you've done. Happy Bob Ross week. Bye-bye.